Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And again, we're going to follow up with Comic-Con stuff, this time talking about panels and exclusives from IDW Publishing. Uh, so again, when I get these emails in, I saw a lot of them come in. I got a, probably about like 15 of them at this point. And these are probably just going to be the five or six that I cover just because of time. I wish I could do some of the other stuff, but I had to go with the stuff that I have the most interest in and the stuff that I talk about mostly on the show. And so IDW does cover like Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, Transformers. And those are things that I've talked about on the show before that I really like, especially Transformers, obviously. Uh, but I'm a big Turtles fan and I'm a big fan of uh, G.I. Joe as well. Uh, but I would say transform in that order, Transformers, Turtles, G.I. Joe. It's probably that order. Uh, but if you like G.I. Joe, check out my friend Joe on Joe podcast. Uh, my friend Joe Slepsky, who's been on my show before, check out his podcast if you like G.I. Joe. That guy knows a lot about G.I. Joe. Um, he's awesome. He's done like over 100 plus episodes by now. He's It's crazy. So, um, all right, our friends over at uh, IDW, thank you for sending this to me. Alyssa, I appreciate this. This is a lot of content, so I'm going to try to go through it as fast as I can. Uh, so we have Chris Rael, who I think stepped away from IDW for a while and is now back. He's the uh, IDW's president, publisher, and CCO over there. Um, and then he's basically coming out saying, like, we got a lot of great stuff just because Comic-Con is going to be at home this year doesn't mean we're not going to bring some fun, interesting panels to you guys. So we have some cool panels. There's going to be, and I'll put links to all these panels down below. The first panel we have is uh, actually focused on G.I. Joe Snake Eyes, the new book that came out by Rob Liefeld. Um, so that's a new comic book out now. The panel goes live on Thursday, July 23rd at 2 p.m., same time as New Mutants. So I'm not going to be able to cover this uh, as it comes up, but it's still maybe hopefully the, the you know, some of these panels, they're only going to air for a limited time. They might be up for 24 hours and go away, but some of the panels they said they're going to leave up permanently. So it could be one of those things where maybe, you know, over time I can cover a lot of this stuff for you guys. So if you have an interest in me talking about what Rob Liefeld says as a Snake Eyes panel, let me know down below. But I'll put a link to that down below so you're going to get a Rob Liefeld panel. Also, the science of Back to the Future, which is going to be cool because it's going to basically be people talking about flux capacitors and sitting around talking about time travel and the rules of time travel in, you know, uh, that show or in that movie, you know, essentially. Uh, so you have John Barber that's going to be there, uh, Kavan Scott, uh, Juan Samu, Sora Nadiri, uh, Dr. Lisa Will, and Andrea Decker, who is a flight science center person, um, a, a fleet science center person. So is uh, Dr. Lisa Will, uh, both at the fleet science center. So that's pretty cool that they're bringing in a data scientist and uh, people from the Institute and stuff like that. And then also the, from the science center. Uh, so that panel is going to be Thursday, uh, July 23rd at 3 p.m. So link to that down below. So it looks like all these, uh, some of these are going to be back to back, you know. But this next panel uh, for Ninja Turtles called Draw a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, with Kevin Eastman, the co-creator of Ninja Turtles, is going to be there. Sophie Campbell, Chad Thomas, and Caleb Golanier. Uh, you know, Kevin Eastman is actually a really great guy. I've met with him a couple times. He actually did two covers for my comic book Soul Star, my Japanese superhero, uh, to raise awareness for aneurysms, for brain aneurysms that we did back in 2011 and 2012. And uh, Kevin Eastman, I, you know, I was Ryan at Golden Apple Comics was nice enough to put me in touch with Kevin. Kevin emailed me and said, hey, man, got your email from Ryan. Uh, is it cool if I do a cover for your comic? And I said, that'd be amazing. And I told him about me and how post-brain aneurysm I'm trying to draw again. So he said, hey, tell you what, why don't you draw something like pencils of a character? And if you're having trouble with backgrounds and things like that, I'll ink it over it and it'll be a collaboration drawing between you and I. So I have the original pencils of my drawing of the female character, the main female character of the book, it was Soulstar's wife. Um, and then also uh, Kevin Eastman's inked version I have as separate piece of paper. And I'm looking to get them reframed because unfortunately the, uh, I had to take them out of the glass frame because that wouldn't have survived coming over from California. So I got to reframe them at some point. So when I have the money to do that, I will, but Kevin is a great guy, and anytime, you know, Joe Slepsky, my friend from Joe and Joe Podcast, he even reached out, he saw Kevin Eastman at a signing recently, and said, hey man, uh, thanks for, I worked with you on Soul Star because I'm one of the artists in that book, with Seek, and Kevin was like, hey, I remember Seek, how's he doing, you know, is he still doing all right and everything, and so the fact that Kevin Eastman even knows I exist, and I've been a fan of his since I was like six years old, and you know, is, is amazing, he's an amazing guy. I'm glad I had a relationship with him and know him in that way and got to work with him in a, a professional capacity because it's still one of the highlights of my life. The guy is the coolest in the world. So um, Friday, July 24th at 1 p.m., draw a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. 
with Kevin Eastman. Unfortunately, I'm going to be working that day, but I think this is going to be one of those panels I watch later, and I might, uh, you know, draw, actually try to draw with Kevin Eastman and draw a Ninja Turtle, along with Chad Thomas and Sophie and, and Caleb. They're all going to be drawing too. So, uh, yeah, maybe they'll each pick a Ninja Turtle to draw and draw one. That'd be pre yeah, pretty neat. You get all four of them there. I think there's a fifth Ninja Turtle now, actually. Um, so then IDW presents the Mueller Report in, uh, the Mueller Report in 10 minutes. So join Shannon Wheeler, a cartoonist, and Stephen Dewan, a journalist, as they take you through the ins and out of the Mueller, uh, the Mueller Report, uh, which is something that's been in the news and, and uh, about conspiracy theories and things like that. But this is more of like their uh, interpretation of it. I think they did a, um, I don't know if they did a book or something together on it, but they, I think this is based on something they worked on that IDW put out there. So they're putting these two creators on a panel together to talk about it. So that could be interesting if you're into like the, you know, that kind of scene. Uh, we don't talk a lot about real world stuff like that on this show, but I know people out there have that interest. So if you do, Friday, July 24th at 5 p.m., check out that panel, link down below uh, for that. This one I'm really interested in, IDW presents Jim Lee's X-Men Artist Edition Spotlight. Uh, if you haven't seen IDW Artist Edition books, they're breathtaking. They're so amazing. I've owned two. I had a, a, a Daredevil one, um, and uh, who else did I? Did I have a Walt Simonson one? No, I don't think I wanted a Walt Simonson one, but um, these are books that I could never afford. I did at one point in my life when I was making a little bit extra money and I owned the two that I had, um, but I ended up selling them to, to pay for bills at one point, to pay for rent, actually. Uh, specifically, I saw I met someone who was willing to pay me what I paid for the books because I kept them in great condition. So they were willing to pay me what I paid for the books, um, plus some, a little bit extra. Uh, just to, And they picked it up in L.A. They just came by my place and picked up the books. And I was able to take that, like, you know, 300 bucks and, and put it towards my rent. So, um, But I'm bummed because now I don't have any artist edition books. But these things are amazing. They're like big, giant print books. They're like, you know, a foot and a half, two feet tall, something like that, and then really wide. Um, they're massive. I think, like, yeah, two feet tall, I think. Um, and they've had some great stuff. And so uh, uh, Dirk Wood, who's a guy I met a bunch of times when I worked in comics, uh, I always wanted to work for IDW. I've always tried to pitch things to them and, and interact with them and stuff. But I was always working either at Top Cow or working with other people. And I just was like, oh, I, I still need to learn stuff here and try to learn here. Um, you know, but and one day when I'm ready, I maybe want to you know try to work at IDW. But I just never made that leap, man. I just got too afraid of, uh, of advancing. Comics was hard work for someone like me with, with having to keep up with a lot of stuff. And I know a lot of you guys go, dude, you have a great memory considering your, your health ailments, like, how, you know, with venom and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, but I cram all that stuff in right before I record. And I, it's the illusion of that I have this amazing brain, but I really don't. It's, it's really frustrating. Um, so I couldn't uh, work in that capacity. I can do physical things to an extent uh, somewhat, although I battle fatigue when I do it. Um, but too much thinking is overwhelming to me. So comics are really hard for me. So I didn't really do very well in comic books. Um, but I always wanted to. I always wanted to uh, work more in comics and work more with people like Dirk because he was always a really nice guy to me. Uh, so Dirk Wood, Scott Williams, who's an artist and inker, worked with Jim Lee for years, uh, uh, you know, collaborated with him on a lot of stuff. Jim Lee's going to be there and Scott Dumbiar uh, is going to be there. And he's a uh, director of special projects like these artist editions at IDW. So that panel is going to be Saturday, July 25th at 12 p.m. You want to check that out. Uh, then I IDW presents uh, IDW in 2020 and beyond. This is an interesting one because I have an interest in the company in general. Like I said, I've always wanted to work for them. Um, so Chris Rial, John Barber, and uh, George uh, Gustinas, they're all going to sit around and talk about where they see the uh, company going. So George is going to moderate the, uh, the panel. And John Barber, who's one of the main editors and chief over there, and he's also a writer on a lot of Transformer stuff. And Chris Rial, who's, like I said, the CCO and president and publisher, it looks like they're going to sit and talk about the company. And so I'm interested in watching that. I don't know if I'll cover it too much on the show because I feel like it'll be a lot of business stuff, uh, some creative stuff, but a lot of business stuff. And I just personally want to check this out. So maybe when I get home from work that day, I'll pop that on. So Saturday, July 25th, 2 p.m. Then we also have Fantagraphics and IDW present classic comic reprints. So this is a lot of those reprint books that have been coming out uh, through IDW. We have Eric Reynolds, uh, Dean Mullaney, Pete Maresca and Karen Green are all going to be on the panel uh, curating. Uh, Karen's going to be curating for comics and cartoons. Uh, all these people are talking about um, their work, what they do in comics, uh, what they've done for IDW, how they work in Fantagraphics and everything, what this project's going to be about, and uh, these reprinting of these older books, uh, which will be pretty neat. The panel goes live July 25th at 6 p.m. Again, these are all Pacific Standard Time, so adjust for if you live in the middle of the country or if you live up like me on the East Coast now, uh, that'll be 9 p.m. our time uh, for that panel. 
So then we have IDW Presents, Imagination and Fun for Kids. So this is going to be more of their focus with like the My Little Pony books. There's a My Little Pony Transformer comic that's out for little kids. Uh, Star Wars Adventure, Sonic the Hedgehog, and uh, Johnny Boo, Marvel Action, like that Marvel Action uh, Spider-Man book we reviewed recently with Venom in them. This is the company that puts that stuff together. Uh, so Tony Fleeks, uh, Evan Stanley, Kim Dwinnell, uh, Adam Tierney, James Kachalka, and Sam Maggs. All of them are going to be on this panel. And it goes live Sunday, July 26th at 10 a.m. So that's a Sunday panel, their only Sunday panel. So there's all that. And then, of course, there's exclusives. Now, I'm not going to, I'll go through a lot of the exclusives, but I won't have images for them. I don't think a lot of these images, they might be out on the website now. The store isn't up as, as far as me recording this. It was supposed to be up. So you can order these convention exclusives now if you're a variant cover collector. But, um, but it was supposed to be up now as of recording this but it's not. But by the time this episode goes up on YouTube, it will be up. So I'll put a link to that store down below so you guys can check that out. So that, you know, you can go buy these books if you want, because I'll put these episodes up on, on, uh, I'll try to put this one up earlier than Wednesday. So that way, you know about the Wednesday panels. I'll do my best. Um, so we have Canto and the Clockwork Fairies one shot convention exclusive. We got Lock and Key number one reprint con, uh, con exclusive. Lock and Key Small Worlds Deluxe Edition. Uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And there's a new Lock and Key show. So you go check that out. It's by Joe Hill um, at, you know, and Gabriel Rodriguez and so uh, of the Small World book. And Gabriel Rodriguez also did the main uh, book too in the beginning. So, um, so yeah, great stuff. So uh, if you watch the show too, check it out. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic number one and My Little Pony Transformers number one. Those are both, and uh, most of these are $10. Some of them are 15 and some of them go up from there, but most of them are 10, 15 bucks for these variant covers. Uh, Sleeping Beauties number one, uh, Snake Eyes Dead Game, which is the uh, Rob Liefeld book. You can get one of those for $15. Uh, you can get one, uh, it's a uh, story and art by Rob Liefeld, script by Chad Bowers. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog number 29 convention exclusive. Sonic Tangle and Whisper number one uh, convention exclusive. Sonic the Hedgehog annual 2020. So there's a lot of Sonic stuff so because the movie was a success. Um, and I think it's going to be releasing in China maybe, but that's according, you know, depending on how COVID goes and everything um, and every, other countries. So it still hasn't even released around the world yet, um, but it's able to own here in the U.S. How crazy. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Annual 2020, and then also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Jenica, number three. That's the newest member of the team, female Ninja Turtle. Um, so uh, that we have those issues, and then Urban Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Urban Legend, number 25. And so those are all available, convention exclusives, $10.00 for two of them, but the uh, annual is $15. I think it's because it's a thicker book, 48 pages. Um, Yasagi Yojimbo, one of my favorite comics, big inspiration for, for me when creating Soul Star is the work of Stan Sakai. And I've had the pleasure of meeting him. He even had, he owned, or I gave him a copy of Soul Star and I signed it for him and he gave me in exchange uh, a copy of one of his uh, his sketchbooks and he signed it for me and it was an even trade actually and I told him because he inspired my work and he was like hey that's great thank you so much so uh, I'm a big fan of Stan Sakai these guys are amazing they're, they're heroes to me legends in my mind so Yusagi Ajimbo number 10 the, uh, exclusive variant cover you can get there I think they've been reprinting Yusagi Ajimbo um, recently in single issue form and it's fantastic I already own them all but it's really good stuff Transformers 84, Secrets and Lies, number one. This is a series I will cover on the uh, the Until All or One show that I do here on the channel. But, uh, you know, but I haven't got into the 84 stuff yet. We're going to wrap up some of the current stuff I've been working on, the current books that are out, get some interviews up. And then once I, and then once the show comes out, after that, we'll get back into the comics. So we're going to review the Netflix show first, and then we'll get into Transformers 84, starting with issue zero, and then we'll start covering the Secrets and Lies miniseries. Um, so yeah, and then there's also some book plate graphic novel editions, uh, Canto, Cosmic Knights, Gem and the Holograms, Johnny Boo, book one, eight, nine, and ten, uh, Johnny Boo meets Dragon Puncher, uh, Lock and Key Special Edition, volumes one, two, and three. Uh, those are also signed, and they run about $110 a piece, but they're giant, cool collector edition hardcovers. Um, then also Lock and Key Master Edition, uh, volumes one, two, and three. Those are $60 a piece, and those are signed by Joe Hill, the writer. Marvel Action Captain Marvel, signed by Sam Maggs for $9.99. Uh, it's a book plate edition. Uh, Red Panda and Moon Bear uh, is uh, $14.99, and that's signed by Gerard Rosello. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Artist edi Artisan Edition, signed by Kevin Eastman. Only 50 bucks. Pretty good deal. And also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Road to Issue 100 Deluxe Edition, signed by Kevin Eastman, 30 bucks. Super sweet. 
then we also have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the IDW Collection Volume 10, uh, signed by Kevin Eastman for 60 bucks. Those are big, thick, hardcover twos, those uh, IDW collections. The Transformer ones are amazing, and the Turtle ones are cool, too. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Ultimate Collection Volume 1, signed by Kevin Eastman, $60. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, crossing over with Yosagi Yojimbo, Expanded Edition, signed by Stan Sakai, $19. Not bad. Uh, and then, or you can get one signed by um, the Con variant, signed by uh, Stan Sakai for $28 for just uh, like 10, nine, 10 more bucks. Um, then you got uh, Yosagi Yojimbo, Bunraka, and Other Stories, signed by Stan Sakai, $30. Walt Simonson's Artist Edition for Star Wars, $135. I love Walt Simonson stuff. Walt Simonson Star Wars Edition, uh, Con variants, uh, $135. Walt Simonson Manhunter and Other Stories, Artist Edition, $135, signed by Walt Simonson. Um, and, you know, I love his art. His wife, Louise Simonson, my favorite writer uh, from growing up. I love her stuff with X-Men and Apocalypse. And also she created Steel and the Man of Steel uh, Death of Superman comic book. So, yeah, big fan of hers. Uh, Walt Simonson's The Mighty Thor. What a great legendary run. Signed by Walt Simonson, $60. Um, or you can get The Return of Beta Ray Bill, my favorite. I love Beta Ray Bill. Uh, signed by Walt Simonson, $135. So, yeah, too, too pricey for me, but worth every penny if you have it because these books are amazing. So yeah, a lot of, this was a longer episode, uh, but this makes up for that like three minute episode I put up uh, before this, uh, you know, with regarding Udon Entertainment and stuff. But uh, yeah, this one's amazing. There's a lot of stuff here and uh, I love what IDW does. They put out a lot of great stuff and I wish they didn't struggle so, uh, so much financially because, you know, they've had... They have a lot of licenses. I love Silent Hill. I wish they would do more Silent Hill comics, but I think because of Konami, they won't. But I wish Silent Hill was still alive in some form besides Pachinko Machines. So I would love to see IDW do more Silent Hill stuff. But those books never really sold very well outside of me. Uh, I love those books, but, uh, but, you know, and I mean, I have I, some I liked, some I didn't like. But the ones I did like, you know, I did a review of one of them recently. I thought it was, you know, really good. I revisited it 15 years after it came out. Um, but that one was really cool. So, yeah, I mean, I, I like a lot of stuff IDW does, but um, yeah, I just wish they weren't struggling so much. But a lot of people are. Companies nowadays, it seems weird, like they just keep getting further and further in debt. And that's not just comics, it's all forms of entertainment and all forms of anything. Everything everything seems to hemorrhage money, even pre-pandemic. Uh, and, uh, and it's scary. And that's why when this pandemic happened, no company was ready to deal with the, the financial fallout of all this stuff. And it's, it sucks to see that we were in much worse shape than we admitted to ourselves you know so i hope idw sticks around i like the stuff they put out there and uh you know and i hope and they get good talent and i think a lot of people cut their teeth and do cool stuff at idw and then go on to do other things and then they have a lot of loyal people who just stick and do great stuff continuously with them like our friend livio ramondelli who we're going to have an interview of him going up very soon when i talked about his new book the kill lock which is out from idw which is a great book it's fantastic so um yeah and he does a lot of transformer work too so i love this company i hope they stick around and uh, it's cool to talk about all the stuff they have coming up so all the links to their panels will be down below and then a link to their store down below if you want to buy any of their variant covers so yeah yeah, and let me know what you buy and which panels you're going to check out in the comments below. We'll continue our conversation down there. This episode has gone long enough, so I'm going to take off. Thank you guys for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.